we often go into our careers with great ideals about wanting to help people and save the world. And then you face the realities of addiction and you think, huh, I don't know if I can really make a difference. And that's the struggle you deal with sometimes. And to me, it's really important to be able to give people tools um, and a framework so that they can maintain hope and really engage with patients. Where they I think Esper provides a container for these conversations um, and some confidence that we can, in a short visit, 10 to 15 minute visit, that we can actually get somewhere. Esper not only uh, gave me the tools to open up the conversation, it made me feel comfortable with even starting that conversation. Uh, when we started about five years ago, people didn't know the stages of change, they didn't know about motivational interviewing, and now it's become part of the culture. One of the more attractive things about Espert is that much of what we deal with in internal medicine has to do with behavior. For a medical student who has spent a lot of time worrying about molecules and cells and drugs, behavior is a, is a confusing area and they don't feel very confident in it. So we're giving people tools to motivate change, to identify problems, and to realize that all these things are interconnected. And you don't take care of people simply with a procedure or a pill. The essence of these kinds of conversations is not really about me getting the answer I want when I want it. It's about me opening up space so the patient can give me the answer they need to give when they're ready to give it. Esbert, that screening, brief intervention, and referral to treatment is a comprehensive, integrated public health approach to the delivery of early intervention and treatment services. It has four steps. The first step is to ask permission of the patient to talk about this sensitive issue, whether it's alcohol, drugs, smoking. That's the first step. The second step is to provide feedback to the patient. But we do this in a non-confrontational way. We tell them what we think about their drinking, but we also elicit feedback from them to talk about what, what is going wrong. The third step is enhanced motivation, where basically we're trying to elicit from the patient their own personal and compelling reasons for either cutting down on their drinking or to follow up with a referral to treatment if they're a dependent drinker or drug user. The fourth, fourth step is to negotiate, to negotiate a contract where the patient says he or she will do this in terms of reducing drinking and making that clear. We give them a prescription for change. We make them write it down and we feel that that helps them remember it better and stick to it. We know that SBIRT works. This has been demonstrated in multiple randomized clinical trials and a 2012 review of 1.5 million screened patients indicated that SBIRT reduces alcohol and drug use six months after receiving the SBIRT intervention leads to improvements in quality of life measures, including employment and education status, housing stability, and past 30-day arrest rates, reduces risky behaviors, not only around substance use, but also for unprotected sexual encounters. So we've been able to study screening brief intervention referral to treatment for a variety of health risks here at Yale. Those have included harmful and hazardous drinkers in the emergency department. We've included it in opiate-addicted patients. We've also used it with HIV risk in unsafe sexual practices and unhealthy drinking in young populations. And additionally, we've used it in smokers. This SAMHSA-developed curriculum is an integral part of the three-year grant supporting SBIRT education at your institution. SAMHSA's SBIRT curriculum is drawn from the experiences of 17 medical residency training programs that received earlier grants. Since 2008, these programs have trained more than 4,700 medical residents and 10,300 allied health professionals. By implementing the SAMHSA curriculum, you can build on the success of these prior efforts and adopt teaching practices that have proven to be most effective. I think the biggest difference for me after my training was actually that I had just this framework in which to actually ask patients questions and just motivational interviewing was also something I had not spent a lot of time learning about and that gave me more tools. The core curriculum covers the essential elements of the SBIRT intervention. For maximum flexibility, the core curriculum is organized into 60 to 90 minute instructional units, depending on the number of practice activities included in a session. The curriculum is multimodal, meaning that instruction can occur through a variety of formats. 
Many instructors find that learning is best supported through a combination of formats, including the online course series, which provides convenient training for trainees and field supervisors as well, readings that support the curriculum, lecture presentations with PowerPoint slide decks and small group discussions that support learning and making real-world connections. Espert role plays and other exercises to build initial skills that are later used in their practice. Students engage in sensitive conversations in front of peers and instructors, taking risks and demonstrating new skills. Trainers are actively involved in helping participants learn from these experiences in a safe environment. Other suggested exercises include videotaping and teaching back to others. Supervised clinical practice is an essential part of the learning. Field supervisors should have motivational interviewing and substance abuse treatment skills, plus knowledge of the substance use continuum and the ESPERT intervention. They should understand how it fits into the system, have basic supervision skills that support fidelity of practice, and the capacity to model skills correctly. Supervised clinical practice is essential because something new is never done 100% right the first time. Newly learned skills are incomplete and will need to be shaped to be most functional in the service setting. Newly learned skills are fragile and need to be supported in the face of reactions from consumers and others in the service setting. Coaching, supervision, and monitoring support implementation, fidelity, and success. Independent study. Instructors often assign between-session challenges to maximize learning. Suggested exercises could include audio taping or videotaping a practice session of the trainee using an MI skill or intervention and reviewing and assessing the tape alone and or with a supervisor, using a proficiency checklist from the handouts to evaluate an encounter, practicing MI with friends, colleagues, or classmates. And the skills training is important because we actually observe the residents and then we coach them about how to do it properly and we see remarkable change right when we're watching them. The SBIRT core curriculum has five modules. In Module 1, the student builds motivation and confidence to become proficient in ESPERT and to practice it within residency and other clinic settings. This module demonstrates how ESPERT is part of a fundamental shift in our understanding and approach to substance use and misuse. Module 2 shows how universal screening for substance use can be embedded and normalized within a practice setting. Students become familiar with using pre-screening and screening tools, scoring results, and using the data for an effective, brief intervention. Practice opportunities are included and encouraged. In Module 3, students learn about stages of change and use of motivational interviewing to practice an overarching change strategy. They practice eliciting personal change talk using the decisional balance and the readiness ruler. In Module 4, Students become familiar with an evidence-based practice model of brief intervention, the Brief Negotiated or Negotiation Interview, or BNI. They incorporate specific motivational interviewing skills and practice brief intervention using the BNI. Module 5 describes substance abuse treatment, including essential components and levels of care. It introduces strategies for initiating a successful treatment referral and lays out the practical aspects of referral and what you should expect from the treatment agency. It identifies common mistakes and how to avoid them. Well, our model of training relies strongly on motivational interviewing uh, for all of our residents and our faculty. Uh, we find that motivational interviewing is a very valuable skill set, not only for substance use, uh, areas, but also all of medicine. So it applies for lifestyle changes. Anytime a, uh, a, a situation occurs where a patient needs to change a behavior, whether that's taking medicine in a particular way, or changing their drinking or alcohol use, or changing their lifestyle, their diet, their exercise, motivational interviewing is very useful. And so while we focus on uh, substance use issues during the SBIRT training, we also give them examples about how they can use it in other ways, and then we find that they get actually more engaged and interested in using the skills. You're encouraged to adapt the curriculum to meet the specific needs of your students and instructors. You can use the instructional formats that your instructors and students prefer. You can tailor the curriculum to focus on how to use SBIRT with specific populations, such as adolescents or seniors. You can add to the core curriculum to address special topics like prescription drug misuse or HIV risk. You can brand the materials with your institution's logo and formatting. 
The curriculum package also includes supplemental materials to support implementation at your institution. The implementation guide is for grant administrators and instructors. It covers project organization, stakeholder engagement, training plan development, and training implementation, with helpful worksheets for each area. It includes challenges, solutions, and lessons learned from previous grantees. Screening tools include Audit, Audit C, DAS-10, and the NIAAA Single Question Alcohol and NIDA Drug Screen. If your proposal specified other validated tools for use with targeted populations such as adolescents, you can discuss them with your project officer. Several examples of proficiency tools are provided for instructors, trainees, and field supervisors. There are hundreds of articles, documents, reports, and guides currently available on SBIRT and related topics. We've included a curated sampling for your use. And last but not least, we provide you with a series of SBIRT demonstration videos for training purposes. There are also dozens of freely available demonstration videos on YouTube and other publicly accessible websites. For more help, you can seek technical assistance or simply ask a question from CSAT's professional services contractor, JBS International. You can either submit an online request at www.samsa-gpra.samsa.gov or your government project officer can do it on your behalf. You will be contacted by an experienced expert implementer or subject matter expert to discuss your needs. You should also check out the Ideas Exchange, an interactive resource where you can find information and share ideas with other programs using the SBIRT curriculum. Reviews of over 1.5 million patients and the experience of 17 residency programs show that SBIRT works. As SBIRT Medical Professional Training Program grantees and with the help of this curriculum, you have an exciting opportunity to build the competencies of the next generation of primary care and allied health professionals. And we started using some of the techniques that I had learned in SBIRT. And I was really amazed to see that this patient who was very upset, very angry about being in the clinic, suddenly was able to start opening up to me and to really think through his substance abuse and his substance use issues. And the training and skills that I've developed through the SBIRT program uh, really allowed me to engage the patient, create that discussion, and really help get him down the pipeline towards help.